The economic history of the world is a record of the economic activities i.e. the production, distribution and consumption of goods and services of all humans, spanning both recorded history and evidenced prehistory. Paleolithic Throughout the Paleolithic era, which was between 500,000 to 10,000 BC, the primary socioeconomic unit was the band small kin group. Communication between bands occurred for the purposes of trading ideas, stories, tools, foods, animal skins, mates, and other commodities. Economic resources were constrained by typical ecosystem factors, density and replacement rates of edible flora and fauna, competition from other consumers organisms, and climate. Throughout the Upper Paleolithic, humans both dispersed and adapted to a greater variety of environments, and also developed their technologies and behaviors to increase productivity in existing environments, taking the global population to between 1 and 15 million. It has been estimated that throughout prehistory, the world average GDP per capita was about $158 per annum, adjusted to $2,013, and did not rise much until the Industrial Revolution. <inaudible> Mesolithic This period began with the end of the last glacial period over 10,000 years ago involving the gradual domestication of plants and animals and the formation of settled communities at various times and places. Topic. Neolithic Within each tribe the activity of individuals was differentiated to specific activities, and the characteristic of some of these activities were limited by the resources naturally present and available from within each tribe's territory, creating specializations of skill. By the Division of labor and evolution of new crafts. Cameron P. 25. Tribal units became naturally isolated through time from the overall developments in skill and technique present within their neighboring environment. To utilize artifacts made by tribes specializing in areas of production not present to other tribes, exchange and trade became necessary." The first object or physical thing specifically used in a way similar enough to the modern definition of money, i.e. in exchange, was probably cattle according to R. Davies. Trading in red ochre is attested in Swaziland. Shell jewelry in the form of strung beads also dates back to this period, and had the basic attributes needed of commodity money. To organize production and to distribute goods and services among their populations, before market economies existed, people relied on tradition, top down command, or community cooperation. Agriculture emerged in the Fertile Crescent, and soon after and apparently independently, in South and East Asia, and the Americas. Cultivation provided complementary carbohydrates in diets, and could potentially produce a surplus to feed off farm workers enabling the development of diversified and stratified societies including a standing military and leisured class. Soon after livestock became domesticated particularly in the Middle East, goats, sheep, cattle, enabling pastoral societies to develop, to exploit lower productivity grasslands unsuited to agriculture. <laughs> Antiquity, Bronze and Iron Ages Early developments in formal money and finance 
The city-states of Sumer developed a trade and market economy based originally on the commodity money of the shekel which was a certain weight measure of barley, while the Babylonians and their city-state neighbors later developed the earliest system of prices using a metric of various commodities that was fixed in a legal code. The early law codes from Sumer could be considered the first written financial law, and had many attributes still in use in the current price system today, such as codified quantities of money for business deals, interest rates, fines for wrongdoing, inheritance rules, laws concerning how private property is to be taxed or divided, within etc. For a summary of the laws, see Babylonian law. Temples are history's first documented creditors at interest, beginning in Sumer in the 3rd millennium. By charging interest and ground rent on their own assets and property, temples helped legitimize the idea of interest-bearing debt and profit-seeking in general. Later, while the temples no longer included the handicraft workshops which characterized 3rd millennium Mesopotamia, in their embassy functions they legitimized profit-seeking trade, as well as by being a major beneficiary. <laughs> Antiquity, Classical Era India and China, the two largest economies respectively, accounted for more than half the size of the world economy. Despite the high GDP, these nations being major population centers, did not have significantly higher GDP per capita. <laughs> Expedition and long-distance commerce The two major changes in commercial activity due to expedition known by historical recounting, are those led by Alexander the Great, which facilitated multinational trade, and the conquest to empire of Caesar a Roman, of France and Britain. <laughs> External trade with the Roman Empire During the time of the trade of the Occident with Rome, Egypt was the wealthiest of all places within the Roman Empire. The merchants of Rome acquired produce from Persia through Egypt, by way of the port of Berenice, and subsequently the Nile. The introduction of coinage According to Herodotus, and most modern scholars, the Lydians were the first people to introduce the use of gold and silver coin. It is thought that these first stamped coins were minted around 650–600 BC. A stator coin was made in the stator trite denomination. To complement the stator, fractions were made, the trite third, the hecta sixth, and so forth in lower denominations. <laughs> Developments in economic awareness and thought The first economist, at least from within opinion generated by the evidence of extant writings, is considered to be Hesiod, by the fact of his having written on the fundamental subject of the scarcity of resources, in Works and Days, the Arthashastra, an Indian work that includes sections on political economy, was composed between the 2nd and 3rd centuries BCE, and is often credited to the Indian thinker Chanakya. Greek and Roman thinkers made various economic observations, especially Aristotle and Xenophon. Many other Greek writings show understanding of sophisticated economic concepts. For instance, a form of Gresham's law is presented in Aristophanes' Frogs. Bryson of Heraclea was a Neoplatonic who is cited as having heavily influenced early Muslim economic scholarship. Topic: Middle Ages. 
In the Middle Ages the world economy slowly expanded with the increase of population and trade. The Silk Road was used for trading between Europe, Central Asia and China. During the early period of the Middle Ages, Europe was an economic backwater, however, by the later medieval period rich trading cities in Italy emerged, creating the first modern accounting and finance systems. The first banknotes were used in Tang Dynasty China in the 9th century with expanded use during the Song Dynasty. Early modern era The early modern era was a time of mercantilism, nationalism, and international trade. The waning of feudalism saw new national economic frameworks begin to be strengthened. After the voyages of Christopher Columbus et al. opened up new opportunities for trade with the New World and Asia, newly powerful monarchies wanted a more powerful military state to boost their status. Mercantilism was a political movement and an economic theory that advocated the use of the state's military power to ensure that local markets and supply sources were protected. The first banknote in Europe was issued by Stockholm's Banco in 1661. Topic: The Industrial Revolution. Economic history as it relates to economic growth in the modern sense first occurred during the Industrial Revolution in Europe, due to high amounts of energy conversion taking place. The 20th century Economic growth spread to all regions of the world during the 20th century, when world GDP per capita quintupled. The highest growth occurred in the 1960s during post-war reconstruction. Some increase in the volume of international trade is due to the reclassification of within-country trade to international trade, because of increasing number of countries and resulting changes in national boundaries. The effect is small, in particular, shipping containers revolutionized trade in the second half of the century, by making it cheaper to transport goods, especially internationally. Topic: 21st century and the future Topic. Global economic crisis The world economy was predicted to shrink by between 0.5% and 1.0% in 2009, the first global contraction in 60 years. In its forecast the International Monetary Fund said that developed countries will suffer deep recession equals equals see also